The M14 is gas operated. That is, some of the gas formed by the firing of the cartridge is bled to the gas cylinder. In the gas cylinder, the gas inside the piston expands. The piston drives the operating rod to the rear, compressing the operating rod spring. Then the compressed operating rod spring expands, driving the operating rod to its forward position. This combination of backward and forward movements initiated by the firing of each cartridge performs a series of steps known as the cycle of functioning. The cycle of functioning can be broken down into eight steps. Of course, these are performed as integrated and overlapping actions. The first step is feeding, which is positioning the cartridge ready for chambering. The second step is chambering, seating the round in the chamber. Third step is locking the bolt to the barrel, thus holding the cartridge seated in the chamber so that gas pressure will be maintained in the barrel to propel the bullet. The fourth step is firing, ignition of the primer of the cartridge in the chamber. Step five is unlocking the bolt from the barrel. Step six is extraction of the empty cartridge case from the chamber. In step seven, the empty cartridge case is ejected from the weapon. And step eight is cocking in preparation for the firing of the next round. These eight steps happen one after another and so rapidly as to be almost simultaneous. By using a schematic drawing, we will see how these eight steps are performed. To start the feeding step, the bolt is moved to the rear. A cartridge from the magazine is fed into position for chambering by the spring-loaded follower in the bottom of the magazine. On the forward movement of the bolt, the hammer is cocked and a cartridge is stripped from the magazine. The cartridge is chambered. The bolt is locked. The rifle is now cocked and ready to be fired when the safety is off. By pressing the trigger, the hammer is released, firing the cartridge. Part of the propelling gas escapes to the gas cylinder. The expanding gas in the gas cylinder drives the piston and operating rod to the rear and the bolt with it. On this rear movement, the bolt is unlocked. The spent cartridge is extracted from the chamber and ejected from the rifle. At the same time, the hammer is again cocked and the cycle ready to start over. Now, let us see in greater detail how the eight functions or steps are performed. When we move the bolt to the rear by hand initially, the bolt clears the top cartridge in the magazine. The magazine spring exerting pressure against the follower forces the top cartridge up in front of the bolt in position for chambering. Let us look at it again. When the bolt is moved to the rear, the bolt rotates. Rotation of the bolt during unlocking cams the hammer slightly rearward. It also moves the firing pin rearward as the firing pin tang contacts the camming surface on the bridge of the receiver. As the bolt continues to the rear, the rear of the feed rib on the bottom of the bolt forces the hammer to the rear and down, pivoting the hammer on the hammer pin. The bolt continues rearward riding over the hammer. The bolt is now driven forward by the expansion of the compressed operating rod spring. The bolt strips the topmost cartridge from the magazine. The cartridge is deflected upward by the feed ramp in the lower rear of the chamber and forced into the chamber. Also, on the forward movement of the bolt, the extractor on the bolt face is forced outward by the rim of the cartridge. 
When the face of the bolt comes against the head of the cartridge, the extractor spring expands and the lip of the extractor engages the extracting groove of the cartridge. Finally, the bolt is locked. Locking of the bolt is accomplished by the rear of the camming surface in the hump of the operating rod. The camming surface contacts the anti-friction roller on the locking lug and rotates the bolt clockwise. By the clockwise rotation, the locking lugs on the bolt are forced into the locking recess of the receiver. Meanwhile, the firing pin tang is aligned with the notch in the bridge of the receiver. The operating rod continues its forward movement for three-eighths of an inch. During chambering and locking, the operating rod is repositioning the gas piston. With the first round chambered and locked, the next step is firing. Firing, of course, is initiated in the firing mechanism assembly. The firing mechanism assembly consists of the hammer. The hammer spring, which drives the hammer and which is compressed when the hammer is cocked. The hammer hooks, which are held by the trigger lugs. The safety, which engages the hammer and blocks movement of the trigger when in the rear safe position. And the sear. The movement of the bolt to the rear forced the rear hammer hooks into engagement with the sear which prevents the hammer from following the bolt forward. When the trigger is released, the front hammer hook will be engaged by the trigger lugs as soon as the sear releases the rear hammer hooks. When the trigger is squeezed, the trigger lugs release the hammer hooks so that the hammer spring can drive the hammer forward. The hammer strikes the tang of the firing pin and moves it forward. The firing pin strikes the primer on the base of the cartridge, igniting the powder. When the cartridge is fired in the chamber, gas pressures build up. And a gas pressure of 50,000 pounds per square inch is exerted in every direction. It cannot escape to the rear because the locked bolt holds the case in the chamber, and the brass case is expanded against the chamber walls, effectively sealing the chamber. The gas can only escape by propelling the bullet out through the muzzle of the rifle. Near the muzzle is the gas port in the barrel, and as the bullet clears the gas port, part of the gas is bled off, entering the gas cylinder and piston. As gas enters the piston, it expands into the gas cylinder plug. Continued expansion of gas builds up a pressure which forces the gas piston to the rear. The initial rearward movement of the piston shuts off the barrel gas port. The pressure exerted against the piston drives it to the rear one and one half inches. As the piston clears the lower gas port in the gas cylinder, The gas pressure instantly vents to the open air, removing all driving force from the piston. During the one and one half inch movement of the piston rearward, the piston is forcing the operating rod to the rear. After completion of piston travel, the force of inertia causes the operating rod to continue to the rear until the termination of recoil. Recoil ends when the shoulder of the operating rod contacts the front end of the receiver. The operating rod spring now expands and forces the operating rod forward in preparation for firing of the next round. In the forward movement, the front end of the operating rod repositions the gas piston, which comes to rest against the gas cylinder plug. To see how unlocking was accomplished, we will repeat the action. When the operating rod moved rearward, it accomplished several things, the first of which was the unlocking of the bolt. 
Before the bolt starts to unlock, the operating rod permits three-eighths of an inch of free travel to the rear. This is a safety factor, permitting the bullet to leave the muzzle and gas pressure to subside before unlocking begins. This prevents gas from blowing back into the rifleman's face when the bolt unlocks. At the completion of free travel, the front of the camming surface in the hump of the operating rod comes in contact with the anti-friction roller on the right locking lug. This rotates the bolt counterclockwise, forcing the locking lug on the bolt out of the locking recess in the receiver and unlocking the bolt. While the bolt is being unlocked, slow initial extraction takes place. The rim of the cartridge case is gripped firmly by the extractor. A slow twisting pull called slow initial extraction is imparted by the rotating bolt. Remember that at the moment the cartridge was fired, gas pressure of 50,000 pounds per square inch expanded the brass cartridge case tight against the chamber walls. It also forced the head of the cartridge case against the face of the bolt. To pry the cartridge loose, the slow twisting pull is required. It begins just before unlocking is completed. The corresponding radii of the locking lugs on the bolt and the locking recesses of the receiver, along with the rotation of the bolt, allow a slight rearward movement of the bolt. This rearward twisting action loosens the case in the chamber and causes slow initial extraction. When the bolt continues to the rear, following unlocking and extraction, the spent cartridge is ejected. 